Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fushan Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Sonia Lalo and I'll be walking you through the physics course. In this topic of optical instruments applications, we'll be considering different optical instruments as the microscope, the telescope, a simple camera, a projector, and the human eye. Microscopes. What are microscopes? Microscopes are, um, they are tools, apparatus, that are used to observe very small objects. They are used to observe very small objects or very small items. That is, um, in the laboratory, you want to monitor the growth of a particular fungus or an algae. For you to do that, you need a microscope to see it. And from the microscope, you can actually see it much, much bigger. And some people actually, there are some prints that are so tiny you can't read with your eye. You need either a microscope or a magnifying lens. A simple microscope contains just one lens. One lens which is a converging lens. So that lens brings the light together and helps the image to be formed. Even though the image is coming from a reasonable a reasonable um, the image is very small. It makes the image bigger. It produces uh, a, uh, an erect and a virtual image magnified. A magnified erect and virtual image. Uh, also to note, in the compound microscope, the compound microscope contains not one lens like in a simple microscope, but two lenses. Yes, two lenses. And both lenses are of short focal lengths. They have short focal lengths. So one of them serves as the object, the object um, lens, and the other one serves as the eye lens. The, magnifi the magnification or magnifying power of the microscope equals to M1 multiplied by M2, where M1 and M2 are the magnifying powers or magnifications of each of the lens lenses. I haven't spoken about microscopes. Some questions will pop up on your screen in a few seconds. Please answer them. I want to see, I want to test how much you've understood of what has been taught so far. You're welcome back. We just finished talking about microscopes and we said about microscopes that they use lenses of short um, focal lengths. Short focal lengths, the image that is produced is erect and it is virtual. It is also an enlarged image. All right, let's progress to considering telescopes. Telescopes. We all know what telescopes are. Telescopes are apparatus or tools that are used to view things that are far. They make things that are actually very far appear. They make things that are actually very far appear close to us. Now, they also use more than one lens. Two lenses. And these two lenses have long focal lengths. The lenses have long focal length. It is the length of the focal is it, it is it is the long focal length that makes it possible for a particular lens to pull light from a very 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 far distance. Our astronomic our astronomical um, te telescopes may contain more than two lenses, may contain up to five, eight lenses, depending on how much of zoom and how many different kind of um, locations we want to view. Oftentimes, it produces images that are magnified, but inverted. The images are magnified, but inverted, that is from the first lens. Then the other lens picks it and tries to adjust it for our viewing pleasure.
apart from the telescope, the, binom the binoculars, the prism binoculars, it, they all work under the same principle. Lights coming, in, instead of lenses to be used, they have a prism collectors. Now the prism collectors reflect the light from one edge of the prism to the other edge of the prism and then to the eye. So it works based on the same kind of principle. And of course, to adjust our focus, you just alter the distance between the lenses or the distance between the prisms. So that's about telescopes. How about the simple camera? The simple camera possesses one lens. It has one lens. It operates with the same principle at the, of the eye. But um, in recent times, our cameras come with more than one lens. This allows us to autofocus, especially most of us that will use our for smartphones as cameras. Our smartphone cameras have more than one lens. That's one of the reasons why your phone can do what is called autofocusing. In the autofocusing process, the lens in the middle is being adjusted such that it can focus on a particular image. It will adjust and find a location, a focal uh, a position where a clear image can be, as, um, can be uh, assessed. So, a camera, a conventional camera can have as many as, it can have three lenses, can have more than three. But let's just consider this one with three lenses. Now, in the camera, this lens at the back here is fixed. This one is sort of fixed as well, but it can be extended, especially in our cameras that have um, a lot more of megapixels. But this middle one is the one that is being moved more often than not. It will be moved backward or forward to adjust the focus of the camera. Let's talk about the projector. The projector works using a very interesting principle. There is a light source. And then there is a concave mirror. Now light comes out of the light source to strike the concave mirror. The concave mirror gives out a parallel light which is sent to the screen. And the screen forwards this light through a The light goes through a compressor or a condenser. The condenser contains a concave lens. From the concave lens condenser, it then goes to the screen. The condenser brings the light together, sort of. Goes to the screen where the image that is required Sorry, shares the light abroad, goes to the screen that is required to have the images that are about to be projected, and then it enters into the screen and it's being converged and it's being blown up onto. Because when it enters into this, it comes out. And an inverted image is formed. So some of the characteristics of the projector is that it contains, um, it, it contains a light source which is small, 
but very, very, very powerful. The condenser is made up of two plano convex lenses. The image that it will produce will be inverted. So when images are about to be inserted into the slide, the images should be rotated before placed. That is, the images should be placed upside down. And that's the method of operation of the projector. Now let's talk about the human eye. In the in a previous lesson, we've spoken about that a bit, but let's shed even more light. So, the human eye has a lens of its own. For a person that has a good eye, he or she would not need glasses. But certain people, other people have to use glasses. Now, the glasses are labeled when we go to get our glasses. You hear some people say, uh, my glass is plus 5, plus 9, minus 2, minus 7, and all of that. What they are simply talking about is the focal length of the glass, the focal length of the glasses. So, inside the eye, of course, there is a, a particular spot called the blind spot. It is located on the retina. That's where sensitivity to light occurs in the eye. And it is required that all the lights coming into the eye should converge to that spot. So, when a person has a normal sight. When the light, light is traveling, the lens of the eye would converge the light into the blind spot and the person will see clearly. But on some certain conditions, maybe the person has an eye defect or something as that. In the case of Myopia. Myopia talks about short sightedness. The light enters into the eye and the image, the eye lens is not strong enough to compress the light well enough. So the image is formed behind the retina and the person will be seen blurly person will see a blurry image. So to have this corrected, a concave lens would be prescribed. Sorry, a convex lens would be prescribed so that the convex lens can start compressing the light even before the, the light gets to the eye lens. And at the eye lens, it is com it's further compressed into the blind spot so that the person can see clearly. In like manner, we have the hypermetropia state. In the hypermetropic states, that is the long sight, the person cannot see things that are far. Sorry, the person can see things that are far, but cannot see things that are close. The person cannot see things which are close. This suggests that the images, when the person sees things that are close, if the person looks at something at a close distance, the image is blocked. So it suggests that the images as the light is coming and enters into the lens so when the image the image which is supposed to fall on this region here is now falling like here so the clarity would be Absence. Now, to have this kind of situation remedied, one needs to introduce a concave 
lens. The concave lens will scatter the light the more before it gets into the eye. So if the light were to come in like this, so that when the lens comp comp uh, compresses, to compress it to the center. So in this lesson, talking on about optical instruments and the application, we've spoken about microscopes, that's the ones that are used to look at or view objects that are very small. And they are said, we said we use lenses, magnifying lenses, as is convex lenses, which have the ability to magnify objects. We use convex lenses which have short focal points. You can use two of them. You can use two of them, but you ensure that they have short focal points. While telescopes use convex lenses with long focal points, a camera may contain three or more lenses to adjust the focus until we can have the kind of image we desire. Same thing applies to our projector. The projector produces an inverted image. So of course, if you want to see something standing, you want to see a man standing, you insert your picture to it as a man with his head on the floor. The human eye also operates and there are two major kinds of eye defects popular and those are the myopia and the hypermetropia. Myopia which talks about short sightedness, the, Im the image of the is formed behind the blind spot. Why in hypermetropia the in image is formed before the blind spot? So for the myopia, convex lens sh it should be used and the hypermetropia, concave lens should be used. In a few seconds, some questions will be displayed on your screen. Please answer them, and if there is anything you do not understand um, what has been taught, you can view the lecture video one more time. Thank you.